What's up everybody, it's Carl, aka Carl Drum Tech. Let's talk about what instructors are looking for when they audition you for independent groups. Cue the music. If you guys are new to my channel, please make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. It's the red button that says subscribe. And uh, that way you are notified anytime I put out a new video revolving around the marching arts, drumline, marching percussion, independent groups, DCI, all that stuff. All the uh, advice that you could possibly want, uh, you will get it here on my channel. So make sure you don't miss a single upload, all right? So uh, you're gonna be notified every single time a new video comes out if you are subscribed. So hit that subscribe button right now if you are not subscribed yet. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. Now, let's talk about uh, what drum instructors are looking for when they audition you for independent groups. But first, this video is sponsored by Band. Band is a free group communication app for busy band directors, drum instructors, and session leaders to stay on top of what's going on with their ensemble members. It has essential features to keep everyone informed, including chat, polls, a group calendar with RSVP, and a group board where you can keep track of who's actually read your messages. I mean, don't you hate it when you send out an informative message and you have no idea if it was received or not? Well, with Band, you can tell who read your message so you can keep your homies accountable. Not only that, but Band helps you eliminate long email threads, after hours phone calls and texts, and hopping around multiple applications to announce things like when and where events are happening. Oh, did I mention that it's free? Oh yeah, it's very free. But wait, it gets even better than that. Not only is the app free to download and use, but if you sign up on the app today, you can win up to $1,000 in Yamaha credits for your group. I mean, how cool is that? Band is available on the App Store or Google Play through your smartphone or via PC by going to band.us or by clicking the link in the description below. So what are you waiting for? Download the app today and band together with your ensemble. See what I did there? So what are drum instructors and staff members looking for when they audition you uh, for their independent groups? Well, this is gonna be the same thing too with like high school and you know, whatever group you're going to audition for, okay? I've been in their shoes, I know what it's like. I've been in your shoes where I go audition for other places. And of course, they are looking for uh, members who are talented, who are uh, have a lot of ability, who have experienced, absolutely. All the things that you can think about as far as like, you know, what you need to be in order to make those groups, uh, you're probably right, okay? So you need ability, you need uh, experience, uh, you need talent, okay? All that stuff counts. But there's another intangible I think that not a lot of people talk about, which is the fact that, you know, when I'm in an instructor's shoes, I'm when I'm looking at a potential, you know, uh, member for a independent group or high school or whatever the case may be, uh, what I'm really looking for is like, what is this person going to be like when they actually make the spot, right? So like, let's say I'm teaching high school and it's like, uh, okay, I have a bass drummer who wants to audition for snare or tenors. Um, when they go audition, I'm gonna think to myself, okay, how is this person going to act uh, when they are on that instrument, right? So I put them on that instrument. So let's say they want to try for snare, put them on snare, see how they play, see you know what their heights are like, see if they listen you know, to other people, all that stuff, right? Are they practicing? All those things matter, right? So what I'm thinking is when they are on that instrument, are they going to play that instrument well? Are they going to practice? Are they going to improve? Uh, do they listen uh, very well? Do they uh, take criticism and then do they adjust as soon as possible, right? All these things come into play. So what I'm really looking for is, you know, what this member is going to be like once they get that spot. It's very similar to like a job interview, right? When you interview somebody, um, you're trying to see if this person will fit their job, right? So, but in an interview process, a lot of times you don't get to see what this person's going to be like in the job once they get, once they, once they start working, right? It's like you do the interview process, they give you your resume, and you kind of have to make a guess based on that information, like the resume, the stuff that's on the resume, um, the stuff that they say in the interview, and then sometimes like you, like once they actually do the job, it may fit the description that they, you know, put out in terms of the uh, resume and the interview, but they may not, and you may end up firing them shortly after, right? But in a audition process, like it's an interview and at the same time it's like you get to a trial of this person uh, trying out that instrument so you can see what they're going to be like in that situation, in that environment, okay? So now when it comes to talent, okay, yes, talent matters, all right? Whether that's in high school or in a independent ensemble, okay? So in an independent ensemble, I think, you know, talent is like, it's it's huge, it's very, very important, right? Because, you know, you kind of have to, uh, you have all these people auditioning and then one way to gauge 
you know where everybody's at is by their by, by their talent level, right? But sometimes talent or even chops is not the number one thing that we're always looking for. Let me explain, okay? So like let's say for example, okay, you have a two you know comparable uh, you know potential you know uh, members for that group, right? One member is, you know, like a little bit better than the other, okay? So let's say this person's chops is a little bit better than this person's chops, okay? But this person, okay, is maybe a uh, age out, right? He's gonna age out uh, this year. This person is 18 or 19. If you take this person, like, they could be in your group for the next three, four, five years. This person could be extremely valuable, especially if their talent level is extremely um, comparable. Like, let's say this person's just a little bit better you may go with this person who has a little bit less talent. Do you see that, right? Or like, let's say um, you have somebody who uh, is, you know, like uh, they're at this level, okay? And then another person who is at this level, okay? But then let's say, like, let's say this person's like down here, okay, okay? So now let's say you ask both these guys to come back at the next camp. This person improves like this, okay? But now this person improves like this. They're still under, but look at that jump. Right? Next camp, this person proves like this. This person is like this. All right now they're neck and almost neck and neck, right? But still it's like that big jump, right? Who are you gonna take? As an instructor, that's a really hard choice to make because it's like, well, right now this person is better. But this person is making huge improvements over time. What I'm thinking as an instructor is, well, this person is I'm thinking is going to make those same improvements throughout the year. So I'm thinking maybe this person is probably better. A better fit for my group and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that on and I'm gonna take that risk even if they're not as good yet I just I can count on them to practice to get better and to make those exponential improvements once they get into the group as they go through tour and, and all that stuff right does that make sense right so it's not always about talent it's not always about your skill level it's not always about your chops okay what's in here what's in here Okay, what are you made of? Are you the type of person who's gonna be like, like, I, like, I may not be there yet, but I'm gonna be there. Like, I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna go for it. Um, you know, you're up for every single challenge. Or you're just like, like, I'm cool. I'm cool with my talent level. Like, you know, I, like, uh, I don't need to practice that much, right? I mean, everybody, for for the most part, everybody's gonna have the attitude like they're gonna practice a lot. Okay, but you know, are you showing those intangibles where you're like, I'm gonna improve exponentially throughout the season? If, you're instru if the instructional staff sees that and they're auditioning you, okay, if they see that, a lot of times, I guarantee you, they're, they're probably gonna go with you if they see exponential improvement, okay? You see what I'm saying, right? Because it's like, in a way, it's, it's a better investment because they know that uh, they can count on that improvement as the season goes on, okay? So yes, your talent will take you very far if you're very skilled, uh, if you're very talented, um, if you are very smart, uh, all that stuff, right? So like, if you have all of the above, right? You have, if you improve a lot, you have the talent, you have the skill level, like, you know, you're gonna be a lock-in, right? You go in there, you know the audition material, like no problem, right? That's another thing, right? It's like, do you show up to, to the camp knowing the audition material, right? Because they're gonna depend on you to make sure that once they give show music out or the warm-up packet out, that you're gonna come back next time and you have it down, right? So it's like, if you don't show up to auditions without the audition materials memorized, I mean, it's very hard for an instructor not to think, well, they're probably not gonna be prepared uh, once I start passing out music, once I start passing out the warm-up packet. Does that make sense, right? So like, you just have to think of it from the other person's point of view. You have to think of it from the, you have to think of it from the instructor's point of view, okay? So when you get cut, you have to think, okay, well, if you get cut, <laughs> not saying you're gonna get cut, all right? But if you get cut, you have to think, what was it? Right, that separated you from everybody else. What made it so that you know you they did the instructor the instructional staff didn't see it in their eyes to pick you, right? Maybe you didn't show those intangibles, maybe you didn't show that improvement, maybe you weren't that prepared. Like you have to ask those things realistically, and then so that when you audition next time, uh, you know what to work on. Yo, I'm interrupting this video blog to give you a quick little lesson on interpretation. So let's say you're having trouble with uh, the rhythmic rhythmical intent of double beat, like let's say but instead you're going, ah, I can't get it. Or what about like a hug -a dick or a triple B? Okay, it was supposed to be one E-N, two E-N, but then you're like, ah, well, that's not one E-N, two E-N. Okay, so what you can do is you can fill in the space, right? So for example, with double B, you can go with the left hand. Same thing with the uh, hug -a dick or triple B. 
So what that does is it forces you to try to make maintain that 60 note evenness and it'll in turn it'll help uh, correct the spacing that you're doing with uh, the double beat or the hug and So for example, you're hearing, yeah, that's not right. Okay, and then hopefully you correct that. And then same thing here, wait a minute. Okay, until you hear the 16th note, you're gonna correct, you're gonna adjust, and that will help you with your rhythmic interpretations. Try that out and uh, have fun. Okay. Uh, does that help? All right. So I know a lot of people, you know, always asking, like, you know, what's uh, what, what's a good like tip I can give them in terms of like, getting ready for auditions and stuff like that. And um, that's definitely one of the things that you know I want to give to you, which is you know try to think of it from an instructor's point of view. Try to think about what they could possibly be looking for. That's gonna be ben that's gonna benefit the entire organization. And yeah, think of it like an interview, but it's like you're they're literally trying you out, right? They're literally seeing what you're going to be like in that situation if they put you there. If they so choose to put you in that situation, how are you going to perform? How are you going to act? How are you going to prepare? How are you going to exponentially get better? Okay? And if all the answers are like this person is going to kill it, they're going to take you more often than not. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys did, do me a huge favor, hit that like button down below. If you have any questions or comments, or uh, if you'd like to share your experience auditioning, or if you're a staff member somewhere, uh, would like to you know throw in your two cents to help people out who are auditioning, I'll leave that in the comments below, okay? Join the conversation. Um, if you guys uh, could feel like this video could help somebody else out, somebody who's auditioning, please make sure you share this with them, or share it on your social media platform. And if you have not subscribed yet, after I told you, I told you to subscribe, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. It's the red button that says subscribe. Um, other than that, uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys want to watch more videos of mine, you can click over here. And then to subscribe, you can subscribe over here. Peace out. See you in the next video.